Fadia. Fadia, I didn't want to say it wrong. Fadia, thanks so much for doing this. It's really nice to meet you. This is how this is going to work. This video isn't about science. This video is about meeting you. Tell me where you're sitting right now. Okay, so I'm Fadia Al Abar, and I am currently uh, in the Azores. The Azores actually belong to Portugal in Europe. And if you would go on a map and if you look in between America and Portugal, kind of in the middle somewhere, that's where the Azores are located. I am sitting in the house of uh, a whale watching company where you cannot go out to sea anymore because the trips to the sea they have stopped. So we're just stuck at home. What do you do? So uh, I was guiding until a couple of months ago. So what we do is we go on board, we take the clients, and uh, we teach them everything we can about uh, the marine mammals that we see. So in the Azores, you can imagine it's in the middle of nowhere, so in the middle of the ocean. We have a lot of whales, we have a lot of dolphins, and we have a lot of species. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah, I love it. This place is amazing to, uh, to live. It's, uh, it's a little paradise. What's your favorite part of your job? Uh, my favorite part is, besides creating awareness with all uh, the clients, because if you spread awareness, people will understand more why we have to study these animals. But the other great thing is that we can collect data while we are guiding. So this season I was collecting, for example, the acoustics of the sperm whales. Um, we were collecting behavioral reactions to the whale watching boats and the sperm whales. and. It was amazing because we could just collect the data and talk to the clients at the same time and the clients would really uh, be excited that we can do this during the whale watching uh, tours. It was really, uh, I really love to be at, out at sea every day, of course, so that's uh, another plus. Who are your clients? Uh, just tourists. Any tourists can come. So kids, adults, people from just yeah, the Azores, everybody. where are they from? A lot of the people are from uh, Portugal, Spain, Netherlands, Europe, but also a lot of Americans come. There's a direct flight from the States uh, to here, I think it's from Boston. So, okay, so you get up in the morning on a good weather day and you get to do one or mm. two trips out during the day? Sometimes even three. That's a lot of work. And then people come and join you and they're on the boat and I'm guessing they have cameras and they want to take pictures of, of whatever. Do you, do you teach other things in between while you're waiting for some animals to surface? Uh, yeah. So actually this year we were doing a lot of the acoustics. So sperm whales, they spend about 40 minutes underwater. And uh, of course when you arrive and the sperm whale just, or, uh, just dived, then everyone is like, okay, there was a sperm whale here, but we didn't see it. So at least we can listen to it. So uh, what we would do is we would drop the hydrophone in the water, and then you start to hear the sounds that the sperm whale is making. Because when the sperm whales they dive, they're always searching for food, and they have these clicks. They sound like kind of like that. And um, so then you can I can show the people like, okay, so there is a sperm whale right here. Actually, I hear two. So there's two sperm whales down here, and then you hear the pe people start to imagine things, and then you kind of fill the 40 minutes before the sperm whale surfaces again. So that you know your your work is really exciting and you get to study these animals and because sperm whales are usually way offshore and deep most people don't get to see sperm whales in their lifetime. Do you have your yeah. favorite story of something that you've seen that was unexpected or just amazing that you you can think of? Uh, well I have many, many really special moments I think with sperm whales, because uh, actually in the Azores it's really deep, quite close to the, sh the quite close to land, so um, it's not so hard to get to the sperm whales as it is in other places, but I think one of uh, the really nice moments I had with sperm whales was uh, when it breached. The sperm whales, they don't really jump out of the water very, uh, very often, and my camera had just been uh, I was without a camera for a while and I, I hate to go out to sleep when I don't have my camera. And the one day, the first day I had my camera again, I saw my first breach and the sperm whale jumped out of the water and it was like this really big, massive animal and then this huge splash. And I got the perfect picture. Uh, it's interesting to see sperm out of the water. They're quite bulky, fat animals. 
they're funny looking. Yeah, square heads. They're, they're pretty funny looking animals. How did you get to do what you're doing? Like, what kind of education do you have? Uh, so I started my education with environmental science. And then I just wanted to focus more on marine science. So I did a minor in marine science. And then I continued. Uh, I did a gap year to some volunteering. Because usually in uh, marine biology, you need to do a lot of volunteering before you get somewhere. Unfortunately, that's the, the reality. So I volunteered in the Philippines uh, to do a photo ID on whale sharks. I uh, worked with dolphins in Malaysia. And uh, then I came back to the Netherlands to um, do my master's in marine biology. Marine Where ecology, you, actually. Where did you do your undergraduate, your bachelor's? Also in the Netherlands. Ah, okay. Also. Is that home? Uh, yeah, so I'm half Dutch and I'm half Kuwaiti. So my mom is from Holland, my dad is from Kuwait. That's why I have the particular last name. So, so you grew up in the Netherlands? Yes? I grew up in Kuwait, actually. In Kuwait, okay. <laughs> and, and you got from Kuwait to, to the Azores. And we've heard you talk about doing your, you know, your internships all over the world, which is common for marine biologists, as you said. But how did you end up in the Azores? How did I end up in the Azores? Um, well, so during my master's, I, I specialized in marine mammals. Uh, I, I did my internship in New Zealand. And then I did my master thesis in Holland. And then I got to know um, the people there and they were telling me about this place, this wars, a really nice place to go for marine mammals. And I, I checked the location and I was like, wow, I didn't even know this existed. It's in the middle of the ocean. That must be amazing. All the things that you've studied, all the places that you've been, all the species that you've had a chance to work with, what's your favorite? I like all marine mammals. I was always very interested in the human interaction with marine mammals, so I was, all my internships they kind of uh, were behavioral, either with tourism or with some kind of human interference to see how they react, because I, I really care about uh, protecting these animals, so I wouldn't say, I cannot, I cannot choose. Maybe false killer whales are the coolest I've seen, but I cannot pick a favorite, <laughs> it's just too hard. That's fair enough. Uh, really, I don't think I've gotten too many people to say they have a favorite animal when they do any kind of an animal biology. It's it's really hard. If you're a shark biologist, you love all sharks. You can't pick a favorite. And, and so that's kind of a good thing to share, to let people know that you get to travel, you get to see a lot of things that people never get to see, and that you're having a hard time picking which one you think is the most amazing. So thanks for helping us keep people excited while they're sequestered in their homes. <laughs> Yeah, and from where you're living now as your backdrop, it it may not be the coolest backdrop that we have during our lifetime, but it's real. And it's, it's good for people to know that part of being a scientist is that we're real people too. So I really like this little thing, so I think it's really, really good work you're doing. Oh, thanks. And we'll see you soon. As soon as we hit that 1,000 mark of subscribers, we go live on YouTube and we'll do streaming there. There may be some kids. I've started asking kids to have their parents videotape them asking a question. We'll be in touch really soon. And, um, and that should yeah. be a lot of fun. I'm sure you'll get a lot of questions. Okay, sounds good. Okay. All right. Have a good day.